Hi, I'm Joe Binkley. Today I'm going to be talking about determining cannabis terpene profiles using gas chromatography and comprehensive two-dimensional gas chromatography with high-performance time-of-flight mass spectrometry. Uh, this is some work that a colleague of mine, Dr. David Alonzo, performed back in our lab in uh, St. Joseph, Michigan. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, right into the meat of it here. Uh, a little bit of background for the presentation. Um, we're going to take a look at um, which cannabis terpene types we're looking at, um, look at the objectives, uh, look at some of the experimental methods such as the sample prep, the data acquisition, and the data processing strategies. Um, then we'll dig into some of the results um, such as the compound characterization um, based on spectral similarities, retention index matches, and uh, mass delta differentiation. Um, then we'll try to incorporate some of these strategies to actually differentiate the different cannabis strains in the, the plants that we looked at. Then we'll uh, have a brief discussion and I'll summarize. Um, a little bit of background, we know cannabis is a complex mixture made up of terpenes, cannabinoids, uh, different flavonoids, and among many other compounds. Um, it's been used for many, many years, both for medicinal purposes as well as recreational purposes. Um, its, med its medical purposes include treatment of chronic pain, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, anxiety, and cancer, just to name a few. Um, its total composition is very important in, per in determining its potency as well as its medicinal uses. uses. Um, this effect of its total composition has been described as the entourage effect, which is it's the effect of all the different compound classes that may be present rather than just uh, traditional um, characterization of the THC and uh, cannabinoid content. So just a, a brief summary here of some of the things that we're looking at. Some of the terpenoids and, and terpenes, limonene, pinene, uh, myrcene, um, some of the synergistic cannabinoids, such as CBN, THC, and CBG, CBD, THC, and then CBN, THC, and CBG. So a review of one of the uh, journal, journal articles that we pulled up is Taming THC, Potential Cannabis Synergy and Phytocannabinoid Terpene Entourage Effects. So what we're really trying to accomplish in this study is to implement GC times GC to differentiate the chemical composition of cannabis to determine differences in different plant types and different uh, cannabis products. Then we're going to use processing software to quickly and confidently identify the compounds that make up these differences and then compare the cannabis strains based on this chemical map. So I show two different contour plots here in this slide, and it appears to be that based on these two um, analyses that we're able to differentiate um, differences in the two. You can see in this particular region right here, there, there are differences in sample A, whereas sample B does not have that uh, particular class of compounds present. So just to look a little, little bit at the sample preparation and the data acquisition strategy, uh, we received distillates from 23 different cannabis strains and over 40 different terpene standards um, from a collaborating test facility. We received indica dominant strains, sativa dominant strains, and then a 50-50 hybrid mixture as well as some unknowns. Uh, samples were simply diluted in isopropanol upon receive, receival and then transferred to two milliliter uh, GC vials for analysis. The data was acquired on a GC TOF system as well as a GC by GC TOF system and uh, all of the data acquisition and instrument, instrument parameters were controlled with our software uh, Chromatof. Uh, here's a brief table of some of the instrument parameters. Uh, we used a 7890 GC that was configured with Leco's dual stage quad jet thermal modulator and an LPAL-3 auto sampler. We used a very small injection volume uh, with a, a fairly high split ratio due to the high sensitivity of the instrument. So we had to inject very little sample. Um, 
with a, quite a high split, which is important because that minimizes the uh, contamination of the GC part of the uh, system. The columns that were used to achieve the separation were a uh, 30 meter RXI 5 MS column was uh, uh, served as our primary separation column. The RXI 17 SIL MS uh, served as the second dimension separation column. We used a two second modulation period, which is the, the time it takes to separate analytes in that second dimension of chromatography. And then for the mass spectrometer, we used our Leco Pegasus BT4D operating with a source temperature of 250 degrees C, electron ionization mode, or EI. The mass range acquired was 45 to 600. And then our acquisition rates were 10 spectra per second for the 1D experiments and 200 spectra per second for the 2D experiments, which is important to note that the acquisition rate of 200 spectra per second is important for doing GC by GC because you end up with very, very narrow second dimension peaks and you have to have high acquisition rates to generate enough data files to appropriately define the peak shape. So a little bit of a cartoon here uh, as far as, you know, it kind of depicts how the system is made up of its different components. Some of the points worth um, highlighting here we have a 30 meter first dimension separation column, which is the RXI5, that's our primary separation. Couple that with a 0 0.6 meter second dimension column of a different stationary phase. Again, I mentioned that it's an RXI5 in the first dimension column and a 17 in the second dimension. The idea is that if we have different stationary phases, that we'll be able to separate analytes that may not have separated effectively on the first dimension of separation that will be separated on the second dimension. Some of the uh, attributes of the system, limits of detection that are achievable on the system are 20 femtograms, linear dynamic range greater than 10 to the four. We can go up to 200 spectra per second in this particular analysis. The instrument is capable of up to 500 spectra per second. Some of the data processing strategies that we used, we used a mass calibration based on siloxanes from the column bleed. Peak find, uh, which is an automated process within our Chromatoff software, which utilizes deconvolution. We searched databases such as NIST 2017, the Wiley 11, and then we also used a, a library that we built um, from the cannabis terpenes that were part of this study. We also use retention index filtering to just add confidence to the uh, analyte assignments. Some of the terpenes, terpene types that we found, we found uh, representative monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, and diterpenes, and you can see those that listed here. Taking a brief look at the contour plot, we can see that the way the data, the way the data is presented we have the x-axis separation, which represents the separation on our 30 meter column. And then we have a separation on the y-axis that represents the separation on that RXI 17 column. So you can see that the, the run length is approximate, approximately 1900 seconds. So it's about, 30 minute, about a 30 minute run. And all the way through the entire run, we're constantly running second dimension separations every two seconds so that we're able to separate items that did not um, fully resolve on the first dimension, but we're able to differentiate them in the second dimension. And we'll, we'll look a little bit closer to that, at that here in a minute. There's an embedded video that shows a different way of looking at these plots. In this, in this view, we're kind of looking at the tops of the, of the chromatogram, and when we look at this 3D surface plot here, you can see that you're able to tip the, the axis and look down at them uh, in, in different ways. So we mentioned that there, we kind of have these maps of the different analytes that come out in the, by way of these contour plots. Um, they give us an enhanced chromatographic resolution. They give us the ability to do some group clustering and the, also the ability to remove interferences. So you can see the group clustering. What I mean by that is you see all the monoterpenes that kind of elude in this region. Oxygenated terpenes are in this region here. 
We have sesquiterpenes and then diterpenes. And then when I say removal of the interferences, the column bleed always ends up eluding away from your analytes of interest. So that gets all of that out of the, out of the way so that it doesn't uh, um, create problems with your mass spectrum that you're using to identify these compounds. So here's an example of why we would want to use GC by GC for an analysis like this. Uh, I mentioned that uh, the cannabis is a very complex mixture, so there's going to be plenty of places throughout a given analysis where you may have more than one analyte eluding at the same time. In this particular case, you can see we've got this, this compound that's been flagged as dendrazoline, and we've got the mass spectrum for that particular retention time. But this ultimately re re resulted in a poor database match because we've got more than one analyte, as I mentioned, eluding in the same time. So the, the spectrum is actually a composite of those two analytes. So if we were to actually take the same exact sample and now run it in a GC by GC mode, we'll see that when we overlay it, we now have what was originally flagged as one analyte now we can see that there's actually two analytes that were separated in this second dimension. So you can see, if we look at the x-axis, they had the same x-axis or primary separation retention time of approximately 933 seconds, but they separated on the second dimension. So they co-eluted on that RxI5 column, but the RxI17 phase was able to separate them. And what that ultimately means is that we get cleaner spectra and we can have more confident identification based on that. So we see the composite spectrum, and now we look at the two different spectra that are from the different analytes when they were separated by GCGC. And what we ultimately end up with is two compounds that were identified with confidence. So we see beta calicorine and dendrazoline. Look at the, looking at now at the tabular data, we can see that in our 1D experiment, we found dendrazoline here. It actually was the right, the right hit. It was, a, it was a, a proper match, but you can see there's not much confidence in it. 485 out of a possible thousand. And then this beta calicarine was not even found. Now, if you look at the GC by GC results, you can see that dendrazoline, we got a 799 out of a possible thousand, and the beta calicarine was 857 out of a possible thousand. You can see they had the same retention time in the first dimension of 933 seconds, but on that two second total separation time in the second dimension, they were, they were able to be fully resolved here. And as it can be seen by the contour plot. Some representative terpenes that were found, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through the list, but the important thing to note is that had excellent similarity scores and mass delta values. So in this particular, these two lists, we have monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, diterpenes, terpenoids. Average mass delta across all of those was 0 0.01 with an average similarity score of 916 out of 1,000. Um, some additional compounds, again, we're trying to look at that whole entourage effect, not just looking at terpenes, not just looking at different cannabinoids and things like that. We want to look at the big picture of what's, what's present, things that could actually be used to differentiate these types of compounds. Um, so in this list, we see aromatics, alkanes, ketones, aldehydes, phenols, uh, esters, PAHs, and nitriles, just to name a few. And again, average... Uh, uh, mass delta values of 0 0.03, similarity scores of 911 out of 1,000. So getting good matches on all these, all these guys. Just to take a look at the quality of the mass spectra that is obtained using this instrumentation and this technique, um, we look at Fenchone here with a mass delta value, which is right on. The theoretical and the, the mass that was determined by the instrument were exactly the same and it resulted in a 986 similarity score out of 1,000 against the library. Looking at another one, copaine, again, we see very good mass delta values and excellent similarity scores for the library, 939 out of 1,000. Uh, same for a couple, a couple of non-terpenoids, so limonic ketone and benzaldehyde, again, both having very good 
spectral analysis scores or spectral similarity scores and great mass delta values. And again, when you add all these things together, similarity searches, mass delta and retention index filtering, it just in increases your confidence in your compound identification. We can visually look at the different maps that we get from the different strains of cannabis, the indica, the sativa, and the combination of the two, and you can see that there are some pretty clear differences between them. We look at the chemical comparison now of the cannabis strains using a software reference utility. Um, it's a reference feature that's within the Chromatoff software, and it allows us to monitor product consistency and stability. It allows us to do some quick pairwise comparison of samples. Um, we can exclude different uh, interferences based on you know, the second dimension separation. Again, I mentioned earlier that it, it allows us to remove this column bleed, which is down, represented down here at the bottom in this um, red region here. And it allows us to compare different regions, specific regions of the contour plots, such as these monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes here. So the results based on using these reference features, it allows us to say that of all the analytes that were found, certain ones based on user-defined criteria are either flagged as out of tolerance or they can be matches. And in some cases you can actually, you can find things that are unique to one sample type versus the other as well. So if you'll recall the slide that I showed earlier, um, I put these two different, these two contour plots side by side early in the presentation, and I showed that you were able to differentiate because there's there's a region here that's present in this sample A that is not present in sample B. So you can see that the chemical makeup of these two samples is definitely different. The only problem was that these are both supposed to be identical strains of cannabis. They're both uh, this Einstein A um, sativa dominant strain. And products that are supposed to be um, identical have been determined to be very chemically different. And th that's really important um, for producers because as a, I guess as a consumer, if you're, I mean, if you're looking at particular products to give you a, a specific medicinal effect, you're, I mean, you're gonna be looking at these strains and looking at the behaviors and the benefits, and you may be selecting something that um, the grower thinks is, is similar, but chemically is very different. So that, that kind of tells us that the grower could use this type of data to, to tell them that it could be very important to harvest at the same time from the same part of the plant, different things like that. So there's value here, even though we, we've shown that um, differentiation of these based on chemical types could be challenging. And you can see here, based on the, what the software returned, these are, not, these are not match. Obviously, we could tell that just visually by looking, but when we look at the reference feature that uh, looks at it on an analyte by analyte basis, we can see that we've matched 88 compounds. We had 358 that were out of tolerance and then over 300 that were actually unique to one, one plant versus the other. So again, now looking at another product, in this case is the boot camp. Um, they, in this case, they look a lot more similar visually than the, pat, the, when, than the last one we looked at, the, um, the Einstein variety. But again, the software is telling us that there's 53 that, that match, 600, almost 650 analytes that are out of tolerance, and then 235 that are unique. So again, these plants that are supposed to be very similar are chemically very, very different. So we had two sets of identical products that we compared, and we can see that by, by looking at this chemical um, fingerprint that they are very different. So are the two sets identical products? No, they're highly variable in their chemical composition. So now if we're to shift gears and target in on just a, a handful of 40 of the, ter the specific terpenes based on the the standards that we received as part of this study, we're able to build a target list of, of those 40. And it, that's good for looking at trace analysis, quantitation, and, and allowing us to rapidly process all of this data. 
our hope was that if we were to look at these very specific group of, of compounds that are um, hoped to differentiate the cannabis, that we would allow, that we would see clustering based on the type. So we've got in the legend here, you can see we've got the red representing the hybrid, the green re representing the indica strain, and the blue representing the sativa strain. And if the chemical makeup would have, hit, would have actually differentiated the plants, we would have actually seen very tight clustering of like all the blues would cluster together, all the greens would cluster together, and all the reds would cluster together. And we can, we can see just based on this plot that that did not in fact happen. So the groups didn't cluster. And that could be from a couple of different possibilities. We could say there was experimental design error, such as in the distillation or the storage of the product. Or one other possibility, which, we, which seems to be the more logical um, approach, is that the natural, var natural variability exists within these hybrid strains. So just a little bit of a discussion here now. The, the past accomplishment is we've developed maps for cannabis di distillates. We've determined that there's no correlation between the product name and the hybrid designation and the chemical composition. And some of the current and future work is to maybe look at some alternate uh, extraction and preparation techniques and to continue to implement GC by GC TOF uh, for cannabis fingerprint fingerprinting or chemovar maps. And in summary, uh, GC by GC facilitates confident cannabis product mapping through enhanced two-dimensional chromatography and high-performance time-of-flight mass spectrometry. The compound identification was achieved through spectral similarity searches of large, well-established databases, mass delta determinations, and retention index filtering. And then the lack of hybrid product cor correlation um, based on maybe the choice of sampling techniques, experimental errors, and ultimately some product variability. Uh, this study here back from 2015 by Elzinga et al. Uh, mentioned that there, is, there exists a continuum of composition amongst cannabis strains rather than distinct chemotypes, which is actually what we determined really here in this study just further supports that conclusion. And an, another quote from that journal was, variations in cannabis chemical composition mandate broad-based chemical profiling. So we can't just focus on terpenes, we can't just focus on um, the THC or the active ingredients, but we've really got to be looking at the bigger picture, which is what a technique such as GC by GC allows us to do. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.